Alan Boyle, and I'm quitting alcohol. So I've turned the corner finally. It seems like the majority of it's over, touch wood, unless my lung collapses again overnight. But yesterday was, that was another fucking level. I've just been thinking about how bad that procedure was all day today. And now I'm getting the late mail from all the fucking doctors saying, yeah, it's well known to be a fucked up procedure. It's known to be one of the worst. Where were you cunts two days ago when you were saying a little bit of pain? Anyway, it didn't fucking end there. After I did the potty, I thought I was going all right. I thought I was managing it all right, but that was just because I was lying down, sitting still, basically. As soon as I needed to move or stand up, I had to stand up a couple of times. And I've got the tube in my chest, which is just cutting into my lung and the inside of my chest. It's hurting like fuck. So I'm breathing in and then there's deferred pain into my like side, my obliques, I think they're called, the side fucking abs. So there's a sharp stabbing pain in there, which also goes with my ribs because my ribs have been under massive trauma as well, having the tube in there for five days. So they're fucked which goes straight into my kidneys, a sharp, sort of like lacerating feeling on my fucking kidneys. That's just from breathing, inhaling once. So that would happen. I would need to breathe again. This is when I'm trying to stand up. I could stand up for 15 seconds before I just started shaking and just cramping up just fucking everywhere. The pain was excruciating. So I just had to lie in bed all night and not fucking move. So at about 10 o'clock, I called one of the nurses over and said, I'm fucking ready for some fentanyl. She had just given me tramadol. I don't know why they keep giving me tramadol. It does nothing. I don't know why I keep accepting it either. Like, I think it's going to do something. It hasn't done anything once. So I'm like, I'm ready for the fentanyl. They were trying to give it to me earlier. And I'm like, no, I'm just going to hold off as long as I can. So I can just fucking sleep when I have it on. So the nurses disappear and they come back like 45 minutes later and they're like, we aren't allowed to give you fentanyl. Some fucking hospital policy where they're not allowed to give it to you at night. And I'm like, hey, actually, I wasn't like, hey, anything. I just turned to my wife and was like, can you just fucking get me some fentanyl? I, 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 I'm fucked. So my wife starts blowing up. She's like, I want to speak to your supervisors. All this sort of shit. In India, if you cause a big enough scene, you're going to get what you want. So they disappeared again for an hour. And I'm in some pretty good agony. This whole thing has been so fucked. But anyway, they come back like an hour later and they've got my fentanyl patch and they fucking pop it on. And I'm like, let's go to fucking slumberland, baby. This will be the first time in like five days where I'm just out of pain. So it was some like slow release fucking sticker thing. They just stick it on your arm. So I'm lying there. Half an hour goes past. Nothing. An hour goes past. Nothing. An hour and a half goes past. Nothing. Two hours goes past. I'm in pretty much more agony than I was before I took the fucking fentanyl. The fentanyl did absolutely fucking nothing for me. I did not get one wink of sleep last night. It was truly... A fucking nightmare. I would close my eyes and I just couldn't get my breathing into a rhythm enough to fall asleep. As soon as I would drift off, I would take like a deep breath (gasps) like that. Then the stabbing pain would come and that would set off a fucking contagion. So I didn't sleep at all with this fucking fentanyl. What a crock of shit that shit is. Or maybe my pain was just too intense for it. But... The fucking word on the street is the fentanyl's this shit. So it should have fucking worked, but it didn't. So all morning, I'm completely fucked. I take another x-ray. I have to get up and stand for that. And I'm shaking and I'm about to collapse. I get taken back to my bed. The doctor's like, we're going to take the tube out now. And I'm like, holy fuck. The tube's coming out. It's been in there since Sunday. And I haven't had a moment of comfort since Sunday. So at like 2 o'clock, they came around, a couple of doctors. And I know this is going to hurt as well. Taking the tube out isn't going to go smoothly. So I'm just bracing myself for what fucking curveball they've got. And the first curveball was, 
The cunts had put the fucking plaster tape over my stitches. So they had to put a stitch either side of the tube when it was in my chest. And they put the stickiest fucking stickiest plaster shit directly over my fucking stitches. So, so immediately he's like, oh, oh. Both of them were like that. Oh, this is going to hurt a little bit. I'm like, yeah, no shit. No fucking shit, it's going to hurt a little bit. So they start slowly taking off this plaster, which is ripping off the stitches, which is causing a lot of fucking pain. And then on top of that, I'm a hairy cunt too. So they basically give me a fucking slow wax as well. And it's not just the stitches pain either. The plaster is stuck to the tube. So they're ripping the plaster off the tube, which is stabbing into my lungs. And the back of my chest, which is just fucking fucking me up. Then he slowly slides out this tube and I can feel it just grazing across my chest. And then finally it's out. Oh my fucking God. I could breathe only a little bit better because it feels like my lungs and my rib cage are bruised as fuck. My ribs feel like they're broken. Everything feels fucked to be honest with you. But compared to yesterday... This is a walk in the fucking park. So the tube's out. Everything seems to be going all right with my lung. It's going to take me at least another four or five days to come right. I really can't breathe that well. I can't really walk that well. So I had to postpone my fucking solo show. I'm just not going to be able to do it on Sunday, especially like fucking 45 minutes to an hour. I'm going to need like five days fucking rest. So they also told me. I can't fucking fly for another three months. So I'm grounded. Grounded like a fucking echidna. Whatever. So I don't know if I'm going to get to base camp now. That's going to be a little bit of a hard sell. Because I need to fly to Nepal. And then I need to acclimatize my collapsed lung to Mount Everest. Anyway, who gives a fuck about that? It's been six days. No shower. I haven't had a shower since Saturday. I'm fucking feeling and smelling pretty musky. And they're saying if my lung's okay, tomorrow they'll do some x-rays. I might get released tomorrow. And before I get released tomorrow, I will be having a fucking sponge bath. Now, I think I fucking deserve the right to have a fucking sponge bath. Why not? It's not like it's going to be full on like hands on body and shit like that, lathering up. He's got a sponge. So the cunt better come around tomorrow because he's got some fucking scrubbing to do. Anyway, that will do for tonight. Hopefully I'm fucking out of here tomorrow and on the road to recovery. I'm going to milk the next fucking week hard. Anyway, if you're enjoying the podcast, share it around with your friends and I'll see you the fuck later.